Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Conn Report wherever you get your podcast. You're watching on YouTube. You can see the little halo effect above me. You're watching there. Um, thanks for tuning in. You can find us there as part of Empire Media. That's A M P I R E. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Always appreciate when you tune in. Programming notes, um, a film review or game review will come out Tuesday morning. And then Tuesday night, Bram Weinstein, the voice of the commanders, and I will do a live live stream YouTube show at 7.30 Eastern time. So join us there. This is Nikki Javal from the Washington Post. You know that we are recording this again Monday morning because I messed up the audio Sunday night. We had this great backdrop with the Denver Broncos Stadium. Now, instead, we have two really tired people at Elway's Restaurant, which is kind of appropriate. So, Nikki, thanks for retaping this. And anyways, let's start with we'll get this out of the way. It's, you know, what do you think of the game? That's a huge win. Yeah, no, it was it was great to see the resilience. You wish they would start faster um, and not have some of the miskies they did in the first half, but they pulled it together. Um, and Sam Howell showed a lot of why they have such faith in him as a quarterback. He's still young, still makes um, some of the mistakes that are reflective of his inexperience, but he he has that voice and he can pull it together. And I, I thought there were a lot of positive things to take from this game, from the defense to the run game, screen game, Howell's play. It was a, it was a big win, 2-0. and and let's stick with Howell for right now, because that's part of the whole deal here. But his, you know, you talk about resilience, and that's with the, the unflappable nature of who he is. And, and you know, you just saw it reflected once again after they get behind. And just what, you know, what have you, I, I guess we keep kind of going back to the same thing as he's even keeled. But what else have you learned about him, even in these first two games? Yeah, I, I just think he doesn't get rattled, which is so easy for a young quarterback to do. Um, you know, when when he makes a mistake or he... It's a Denver fan. <laughs> when he makes a mistake or, you know, there's a sack or, or something goes wrong, he he doesn't seem phased by it. He he he. <laughs> Not like you're... That's a crying baby in the background because it's 7 a.m. Eastern time. Eastern, yeah. Um, but he, he doesn't he doesn't seem rowdy. He doesn't let the mistake snowball. Um, and he's able to get the offense back into it. Um, he made some really good throws. I, you know, obviously, the 30-yard touchdown to Terry, that throw to John Bates. That was awesome. Yeah, that was great. Um, you know, he's had he had two like that, uh, the one to Curtis Samuel um, in the first game. So he's he's shown a lot of positives his mobility his scrambles extend plays so um it's a good foundation for a quarterback and you hope he can just build on it and i think you know you talk you know again sometimes early on in the games the protection's breaking down he's part of the protection because you've got to get rid of the ball and there are times where he's still holding it a little bit much but man does he know it? he's he's a he's a better version of taylor heineke where you you get that moxie you can put things behind you and then you go, but it's the arm is there. Like that throw to Bates, the throw to Terry was fantastic. Great catch. The throw to Bates before halftime to get in the field goal range, second week in a row where he's done that was a bullet. Oh, you know, and it's funny because I asked him afterwards after the um, press conference ended, just like, you know, about that place. Oh, well, that's that's where you have to go in that coverage. Right. Well, sure, but you got to get it over the corner right. and the safety's coming. So you got to zip it in there, you know, right. and that was impressive yeah and and the touch on the terry i mean he threw it in the perfect spot so terry could go up and get it um just on his outside shoulder high enough to where he could he could pull it down so it, it was yeah he had a lot of those plays there were a couple that or there was one that was deflected i don't know if it was necessarily on him that was in the first half when the offense was sort of struggling but you know they they pulled it together and i, I just think that's a that's a good sign for a team and let's talk about like jo, jo, i was gonna say jay leno it was charles leno <laughs> it's, early. it's early it's early but anyway he brought it up after the game he said it last week it's yeah. different right. and it's funny because i've thought that these teams the last couple of years have had some resiliency yeah. right because they you know they get down in the season they bounce back but there's something a little bit different with this team. Do you think? Yeah. Oh, I think it starts, you know, the biggest thing obviously is the ownership, you know, they, they you kind of have sort of that black cloud lifted. So you can, you can have hope in these moments where they do bounce back and they do have a big win and not feel like, you know, 
she was going to drop at some point, you know, that was the feeling a lot over the last three years. And then to have a quarterback like Sam Howell, who's not perfect. It's still early. Don't want to get ahead of ourselves um, given his inexperience, but he shows a lot of the things that were missing, you know, whether it was Carson Wentz and I don't, I don't mean to compare, but still it's, it's, his ability to avoid pressure, step up in the pocket, um, use his mobility to extend plays or, you know, to to make those big throws. Those are at times things that were missing for Washington. Yeah, and as soon as and the, the beauty for Washington is he's learning at quarterback. They are three, you know, with him while right. he's learning. And that because, again, like some of those plays are on. This is where that second half, especially in the second quarter on we say, OK, this is who they see. But it's the learning curve where, again, he's growing, he's learning because he'll have to. Uh, it's getting through your progressions at a proper pace. And it's going to take a while for that. Cause it's not like, Oh, I saw this last week. I can do this. It's every week. There's something different, but that's what to me it gets is for, if you're a Washington fan is that three and O with him learning. Right? No, I think I thought it was huge. And you're starting to see the others kind of feed off of it. You know, I, I thought Brian Robinson had a tremendous game, complete game. You see how he can be involved in the screen game, the passing game um, broke off some big runs, which was huge. Um, Antonio Gibson had that big catch and run on the screen. You see the defense feed off of it. The defensive line, Chase Young and Montez, Montez Sweat combined for three sacks. I mean, it's, it's just good to see all around. And let's let's go to the run game because it's funny because if you mentioned Brian Robinson, someone else is going to say, well, yeah, and Antonio Gibson. Right. They always want to point that out because it was big. But Robinson getting those runs and, you know, it's like, have we seen him yet? I, and he says no, but, you know, not to the full degree, but we're starting to see right. it. And, the you know, to me, it's the cuts, the vision. I felt like they did a good job with Denver getting him into lighter boxes. That's where o Oakland, the Raiders, had success last week right. against that. And that was smart. But he did a good job with with that. And, yeah. and you know, so what what, did, what have you seen from him the last? Season? Yeah, I think you see a, a lot of what he showed last season with his uh, he's just a powerful runner. He can drag defenders with him to to get some extra yardage. Um, you know, his his catch ability, too. I thought that was pretty underrated last season. They're finding ways to utilize it this season. And I think the biggest thing is you're starting to see how the run game fits in this offense. I think there's still a question of that throughout camp. And even in the first game, you know, how does that group fit in? Because they're talented players, good players. But how will they utilize them? I think we're starting to see that. And Ian, they talked on, I think it was Friday or, or Thursday or Friday, they were talking about how Robinson's still kind of getting used to how the enemy wants them to run because it is different. But again, once you start seeing that, you start seeing the ability in those those FU type runs and just power runs that kind of, to me, gets teams fired up. Right. And that, yeah, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, he looked good. He looked good. And, and Gibson, the screen game, because we brought yeah. that up and that was huge, too. It's the first time I think we've really seen the impact of that screen game to the degree that they want it. And there were a couple of screens like they got. Gibson the ball in space they get Robinson the ball in space and that one in space to Robinson was impressive because there was five or six guys coming he's got to be patient to get it over there um, but the other one that impressed me too is a nine yard game but they had the little jet action or no, the bubble action to the right then Gibson swings out to the left two defenders go with him and they hit Cole Turner for an inside screen, which right. just really, they were, so we're seeing that effect right right no I thought it was it was a good game all around I you could see the enemy getting his rhythm too, you know, the first game, it was, a, there were some issues on offense, but you could see them getting in a rhythm. You could see him getting in a play calling rhythm. You know, once you get that momentum, it starts to roll all around. So. And then defensive and defensively, well, the other, well, you know what? Cam Cheeseman's had trouble on snaps. We know that we don't have to go there. I think they're going to have to take a hard look at that because it's happened since the summer started. The question is, you Take him out of the equation. Who are you going to bring in? That's, yeah, that's always yeah. the hard part. But you're going to have to try and do something because right. it's been consistent since the start of training camp. Let's go to the defense, and you brought up Deron Payne earlier and, and Montez. And, well, let's go to Chase Young first because it's a big win. So let's go inside the lock. I keep saying let's go inside the locker room because we talked about this after the game and the scene with with Terry and Montez. Yep. What did what did you you know we saw? But what did you see? Yeah, I thought it was really cool. Um, you know, Chase had. You know, probably his his I mean, undoubtedly his best game since the knee injury. You know, he had his first full sacks is since October 2021. Right. Um, total of one and a half. And, you know, it's just a big comeback for everything he's been through with the knee injury, missing 22 games there, missing the first game of the season with the stinger. So and Terry recognized that and he just went up to him, gave him a hug, told him he was proud of him. And 
they had a, a fairly lengthy heart to heart and it was just cool to see. And that's, that's just Terry. It is. And he came, he goes, I'm proud of you, bro. And so, yeah. you know, that was just, but he, again, it was a, a couple minutes he spent there. And I know like for Chase, it's the journey, right? Cause like it has been a journey. So I know there's been a lot of criticism um, fans and certainly some media about who, you know, where's he going to go? What kind of player is he? And I think right. we saw today now, you know, they have a lot of talent at the defensive line, but like, for example, that Russell Wilson scramble, that's a first down. If it's not chase, chase, chasing him. He really did hunt him down there. Yeah. No, that was, a, that was a really good play. Good sack. And you could, yeah, all around it was good. Yeah. And so, but it's like, it is that journey that he's had to travel because it's been a hard yeah. road and it wasn't his decision to sit out last week, but what right. you get that group with him in there, how much better can this group be up front? Yeah. I mean, they can, he's an, a rare talent the question is and this was a question last year it was a question in 2021 can they play as a group and not have everybody freelance i thought we saw some of that today can it continue they got the talent there's that's never been a question you know have you seen a guy dominate one series like deron did oh my god that was unbelievable first first series of the second half was a sack tackle for loss and batted plat batted pass and single-handedly forced a three and out it was unbelievable he's playing at an all pro level yeah. at the first two games yes all pro level right yep. yes no i mean this is this is why they paid him 90 million dollars you know yeah yeah and, and and that's a ton of money and that's what they can do to chase if he produces this the rest of the year or montez one of them is going to get paid because right. montez is off to a really good start too NFL Sunday Ticket is now on YouTube and YouTube TV, which means that you can stay close to your team even if you don't live in their town. Like, maybe you're a Raven who married a Seahawk who got a job in the land of the Falcons. With NFL Sunday Ticket, you can watch your team's out-of-market Sunday afternoon games no matter where you live because you shouldn't have to change teams even if you change towns. NFL Sunday Ticket, now on YouTube and YouTube TV. Go to youtube.com slash presale to get $50 off. Terms and embargoes apply. Offer ends 919. No refund. Subscription auto renews. We're back with another week of football, and DraftKings Sportsbook is keeping us in on the NFL action with great offers every single game day. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Throw five down on any of this week's epic matchups to walk away an instant winner. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Football's more fun when you're in on the action, so download the app now and sign up with code KIME, K-E-I-M. New customers can bet just $5 to get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, with code KIME. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, licensee partner Golden Nugget Lake Charles, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. And so what do you have concerns or anything about the slow, the slow starts? How in, obviously they have to fix that. What's your level of concern with what you've seen in those slow starts going forward? Yeah. You just don't want them to get too far in a hole to where they can't climb out of it, you know? And that was, that was a concern last night, you know, like had they gotten too far, there's, are they going to be able to clean it up and reverse course? Um, and, it, and you just think of what they could be had if they start faster, you know, they, they won't win by two points. They could dominate teams. So, and it's, I think it's critical in this division. I mean, we're seeing what Dallas is doing. So I, I think it's important for them to, to really play all four quarters. And they have to learn how to defend a Hail Mary. And that's because that's two we've seen now in a yeah. couple of years. And even on that one, there was, um, you know, guys um, just, I think it was Percy came up ahead, but they didn't see the tight end sneak yeah. behind him. Yeah. And that's why, that's why he got the score, but they have to defend that um, two point conversion penalty. Which one? Two point conversion. Oh, yeah. Two. Oh yeah. I think he got away with a PI, but. You know, they didn't call Curtis Samuel. They're not going to call this one, yeah. but the other funny. Yeah. And that's okay. Listen, yeah. there's a new owner. There's a new name. Yeah. 
you got the breaks there. So right. stop with all, you know, yeah. but with the other thing is it's funny. Cause like I was talking about after the game, like Brian Robinson's the two point conversion. We're talking like this much. Right. That's the difference in the game. Right. Um, but also go, let's go back to Terry to McLaurin because yeah. we were talking about this after the game, just like and you brought up a good observation about what you saw from Terry just when he was talking yeah. to us. Yeah, no, I just, you could see he was giddy about that 30 yard touchdown because to him, it showed one, a momentum change in the game. You know, they really started to get things rolling, but it also showed him what it can be, I think, with Sam Powell, with his arm, his vision. I I, I think it was kind of not eye-opening because he's been there. He's been working with Sam Howell, but I mean, that's something that he's been waiting for all season. It's something they practice for. They practice during the week. Um, so it was, it was a good moment. I think it, it kind of showed Terry, you know, maybe this – this could spark the the turnaround they've needed. I mean, he's played with how many eight quarterbacks? I mean, a, and a young quarterback with a good arm is something yeah. a receiver will always like. And that's why I wonder for him is, is part of that excitement. And I don't want to overstate, like there are still things that how, <laughs> hey, th- thank you very much. So the, <laughs> see, we're doing a, this is a live show like that. Um, anyway, but, yeah. but I think with a young quarterback like that, that it, 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 can generate that level of optimism. Right. And I think that's where, again, he's got a lot to learn that we don't know what the finished product's going to look right. like, but what we have seen is he can make plays when they need them. Right. And that generates a level of hope throughout right. the organization. Right. What did you, you know, again, moving to and oh, going for, he got the bills this week. Where do you think this team is at? Are you saying like, do you look at it like, Hey, they really is different. This can be the start of something big. Or do you say like, there's still there's probably still more to see, but what's your assessment after two? Yeah, no, I think it's a great start. I think it's a great start. It's sort of the tone setter, no doubt for the season, but you know, you got to keep it rolling. You got to keep clean up those mistakes, but you know, I think it's a great start, honestly. Yeah, it, it, and, it sh- and people should be excited. And I think because yeah. it is a new day. So anyway, that's it from the Denver airport. With Nikki Javala, my pal from the Washington Post. You can check all their stuff out there at Nikki underscore Javala, J H A B V A L A. Go on Twitter or X or whatever it is. And there you go. And we may have, you know, the one last night was really, really good. So, you know, this one was good too. Yeah. So I appreciate Nikki retaping this and always being a pal to join the show. Again, another show Tuesday morning, looking after watching some of the game again. And then Tuesday night, live stream, 7.30 Eastern time with the voice of the commanders, Bram Weinstein. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time.